Hello, Uggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today our question comes from Paul Zank, K6PMZ. He says, uh, hi Dave, great videos. He enjoys them and he says that uh, it's not necessary to do all HF bands, that is true. He's looking at 80, 40, 20, 15, and 10. Those are the classic ham bands. In addition to those, there are the so-called WARC, which stands for World Administrative Radio Conference. And in 1979, I think it was, that they gave ham radio operators additional bands. They gave them on a 30 and on 17 and uh, 12. And I may have missed one for that. The 60 meters came later, by the way. Okay, the question is this. So I have a one band antenna 80 meters. My 100 watts would go entirely to that one band, yes. But let's say I have a two band or more antenna. Do I lose power by those other frequencies being on that antenna? Seems like you would reduce the amount of power to the different bands even though they're not being used. No, that's not how it works. Although, yes, under certain circumstances. In essence, it seemed to be good and it would be good to have a couple antennas with a switchable splitter. A lot of people prefer that, but if you don't have the room, you may certainly put up a multi-band antenna. Let's show how that would work with a fan dipole. Okay, so what we have here is an 80 meter dipole dipole. Okay, so it's cut in the center. Now, if we were to add to that a 40 meter dipole fed from the same point here, then you have what's called a fan dipole. Now, the thing about a fan dipole is that you can use it on multiple bands. There are many, many kinds of multiband antennas. There are verticals that say have a trap in the middle. Um, there are multi-band loops uh, that um, will work on multiple bands. You have to tune them. That's a non-resonant uh, antenna that is resonated by an antenna tuner uh, with a vertical, with traps, or whatever. There are many different ways of doing verticals. Uh, you would be able to do that. Now let's look at this. When the power comes in here, um, this will not resonate at 40 meters because it's too long. So the power goes this way at 40 meters. Now, if you use 80 meters or whatever, maybe it's 75 you tuned it for, the power will go this way because that's where it's resonant, okay? Now, um, in a vertical antenna, the 80 meter stuff will go right through the trap all the way to the top. And the 40 meter will go up here and then can't go any further. Okay, because this is a, a very high impedance to it and it can't go further and it won't excite that part of the antenna. I said that works, but there's one place where it's a little different. I said a 40 meter antenna here Suppose you put a short antenna down here for 15 meters. If you do that, it turns out that the 40 meter dipole is a three halves wavelength. Lambda stands for wavelength. Okay. And you can, you can actually skip this antenna in a multiband or you can put it in because it will Partial, it comes very close to wanting to resonate the 40 meter antenna. That's okay. Some of your radiation goes out in the 40 meters, some of it goes out in the 15. That's the only case <clears throat> where you get the harmonic type uh, relationship. Uh, in other words, uh, on a fan dipole, you may not need to put in the 15 meter element. A lot of vertical antennas may 
uh, use the whole 40 meter for 15 meters, or they may not. Uh, the more modern approach to things is to have a separate 15 meter section because uh, the 40 meter section is actually too long to resonate well. But the bottom line for your question is this. The power, oddly enough, seeks resonance, seeks a place where it can resonate. And so in a tuned antenna, uh, if you have two tuned antennas on the same uh, dipole feed that are of different frequency, the power from your transceiver will go into the one that is resonant. And it will basically ignore the others because the others will appear like a high impedance. I'll show you how that works here. This um, 80 meter antenna, if we were to divide it in half, okay, this is uh, a four, this right here is a 40 meter dipole with the center here in the end here. Similarly, we have another one here with the center here and the end here. It would become an end-fed dipole. And if you feed it with only 50 ohms, uh, it's not going to resonate at all. You have to feed it at something like 20, uh, 2,500 ohms or something like that, which means a 49 to 1 ballon, which is a 7 to 1. That's a 7 to one turns ratio, okay? Um, so I hope that helps you understand a little bit. It's okay to go ahead and feed these. You can have separate dipoles if you want, uh, and perhaps you want one dipole to feed more in one direction. On another band, you want it to feed a different direction like that. Uh, whatever works for you, the fan dipole uh, is uh, often used to uh, save antenna wire. Giveaway number four is coming up. And this is giveaway number four right here. It's an antenna. It's an antenna by Alpha Delta. And it's uh, the model uh, DXEE. And it has traps for 40 and 20. So it'll work on um, whichever half of the 40 meter band you select. You can select like the Lower half so you can work FTA, you can select the upper half so you can do sideband. Then it covers all of 20, all of 15, and the important part of 10 meters. Okay, so it's got um, a, uh, it's a fan dipole plus it's the trapped dipole. It's a very nice antenna, they're kind of pricey. It's built like a Sherman tank. It is very, very sturdy. It has another advantage. It is only 40 feet long, and yet it will cover 40 meters. So, and it's got nice gray wire that's hard to see. Uh, this can be set up as an inverted V, even only 20 feet high. And so it'd be a great antenna in some HOAs that uh, will allow limited antennas, but not the great big ones. I kind of like this antenna. Uh, this was one of the antennas that I considered to be the reference station antenna. But because it only covered part of 40 meters, it was not selected. It's still a fine antenna. So this will be giveaway number four. So here's how you enter. I should warn you the thing is dirty because it's actually been up and it's been a winter outside. Um, here's how you enter. Send a postcard. QSL card, or a simple uh, envelope with a single sheet of paper in it. Send it to Dave Kassler, KE0OG, PO Box 98, Ridgeway, Colorado, 81432. Send to me the giveaway number, which is number four, giveaway number four. Okay, put your name, call sign, your the address to which you want this mailed, it'll come via United States Postal Service, uh, priority mail, and um, also include in there your phone number in case I need to get in touch with you. Now note that I do not need your uh, email or anything like that. Uh, after the drawing, all entries will be destroyed, so there will be no record to worry about. Um, 
I'm not selling any information or anything like that. Even the winner, I'm going to throw their entry back in the box so they get that back. I'm not keeping any information. So here's a way to enter and help me declutter my Hamjack a little bit. All the things that I purchased, I purchased this with channel funds, and now I'm giving it back uh, because I've uh, used it for that selection process. We went ahead with the MFJ 2010 as the reference antenna. This would be my next choice as to the antenna I would uh, put up because it's only 40 feet long. Okay, so there you have it. If you'd like to support this channel, you can go to decastlercom slash support and look at various ways you can do that. One of the best ways you can support this channel is by um, subscribing. By uh, subscribing tells YouTube this is a good channel and uh, commenting <clears throat> or liking or even disliking is something that you can do to uh, show YouTube that this is a channel that you like to interact with. So until we next meet, 73.